First John chapter 4, we hear this. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. Now, this world needs love desperately. In other words, this world needs God. Uh, he is love, and because God is love, in God we can love. Uh, welcome to worship. It's great to have you joining us uh, via the live stream. Welcome especially to anyone who's joining us for the first time. We're so glad to have you. And uh, I'd encourage you, we have a video on our website it's called God's Good News. Uh, watch that video and, and you can hear uh, the love that God has shown to you in Christ Jesus. Now today is Trinity Sunday. Today we celebrate and marvel at the wonder and mystery of God. Uh, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but one God. So welcome, again glad to have you, and we begin with our opening hymn. Haya tunanzia ibada hii kwa jina la Baba na la Mwana na Roho Mtakatifu. Nabda bism al-Ab wal-Eben wa Roha al-Qudus. We begin our service in the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess and forgiveness of sins. Since we have such a great higher priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus Christ our Lord, let us with confidence draw near to God that we may receive mercy and find grace in time of need. Have mercy on us according to the according to the Lord. In your great mercy, wash away our iniquity and clean us from sins, creating us in us and renew a right spirit with us. Do not lose do not take us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain us with your spirit. Amen. God is merciful and gracious, granting forgiveness through Jesus Christ to all who confess their sin as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Good morning. I am Barb Sertman. Here is the prayer of the day. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity in the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello, St. Luke families. This is the Balks family, and we hope you are all doing well. And today's responsive reading is taken from Psalm 16. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him because he has shown his mercy to us. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol. Or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. And to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning. Is now and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him because he has shown his mercy to us. The first lesson is from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 and 26 through 31. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. This is Dan Lufford, wishing you all God's peace. Our second lesson is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning at the 14th verse. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. 
being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne. He foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. He has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. St. Luke as a congregation is composed of many different groups of people, uh, many different languages. And so as we hear our gospel read today, we'll hear it read in Swahili. And I invite you to follow along in your own language at home. Tunakwenda kusoma Matayo Shirini Sura ya Shirini na Nane na vesi ya kuminasita hadi shirini na wale wanafunzi kumi na moja wakaenda galilaya mpaka mlima ule alio waagiza yesu na walipomona walimsujudia lakini baazi yao waliona shaka yesu wakaja kwao akasema nao akawaambia nimepewa mamlaka yote mbinguni na duniani bas enendeni mkawafanye mataifa yote kuwa wanafunzi mkiwabatiza kwa jina la baba na la mwana na la roho mtakatifu na kuwafundisha kuyashika yote niliyowaamuru ninyi na tazama 
mimi nipo pamoja nanyi siku zote hata ukamilifu wa dhahari Our service continues now with the children's message. Hi kids. My name is Miss Lisa and this is Haley. She's going to help me out today and be my assistant. Pastor Sutton today is going to talk about um, he's going to teach us about the triune God. We believing on one God who is the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Three persons, one being. That might be a little bit hard to think about sometimes, right? Yeah, baby. So Haley and I have a couple things that might help. So first let's look at this egg. Haley, do you want to break that for us? Yeah. Go ahead and break it. Okay, break it into the, into the bowl. So we have the shell that protects, the white which holds the yolk, and the yolk, which is the really nutritious part. Can I have Three parts, one thing. Yes, you can. There you go. So we can also think about an apple. So I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it. Let's look inside this apple. Okay, so on the outside of the apple, we have the skin, which protects like the father. The inside, we have the flesh. So Jesus is the flesh. And then in the very inside, we have seeds um, that multiply like the Holy Spirit. Where's the other one? That's it. Three in one. So today I want you to listen carefully to Pastor Sutton as he explains more about what? our amazing God. Can you hear this? After we're done. Um, and now let's put our hands together for a brief prayer. Can you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of life and thank you for the children you have blessed us with. We ask that you protect our children, Lord. Please keep them safe and healthy. We also ask that you bless our children, Lord, and that they too might experience your grace today. This we pray in your name. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Ernest Hemingway has a short story. Uh, It's entitled, The Capital of the World. And in this short story, Hemingway tells the proverbial tale of a young man named Paco. Now, this is one of my favorite stories to tell, and I'm sure I've said it before in some capacity at St. Luke. So if you've heard me tell this story already, I apologize, but it's a good one. It bears repeating. Now, this story about Paco, it didn't begin with Hemingway. Uh, It predates him, and there's multiple versions of it, so maybe you've heard it before. Uh, Paco wanted to be a bullfighter in Madrid. This was his heart's desire. And he told his father about it, and his father said flatly, no, I don't want you to do it. His father knew that second-rate bullfighters don't become first-rate bullfighters because they die. It's that dangerous. Well, Paco said, I don't care. I'm doing it anyway. He left for Madrid. He cut himself out from the family, told his father off, and he left. Well, the father was heartbroken, devastated, And after a period of time, he actually went to Madrid to find Paco to reconcile with him. Now, this was an age before Facebook, before email, before cell phones. And so the father had to put an advertisement in the newspaper to try to reach his son, Paco. So he put an advertisement in the newspaper. It said this, Paco, meet me at Hotel Montana, noon Tuesday, all is forgiven, Papa. Well, the father arrived at the hotel, noon on Tuesday, just like the advertisement said, and as the story goes, there were 800 Pacos there. 800 Pacos had seen this in the newspaper and came to the hotel, hoping it was their Papa who wanted to be reconciled, who wanted to forgive them. Now, it's possible that Paco is just a really popular name in Madrid, but more likely, this story points out how widespread, how deep of a need and a longing there is for forgiveness and for reconciliation. And and it's not just people named Paco who need reconciliation. We all do. Each and every one of us, we were made to be together, to to live in harmony with one another, to live in harmony with God and in relationship with our Creator, and to live in harmony and peace and in relationship with those around us. But we live in a world that is anything but that. Uh, In our world, we see disharmony, contempt. We see division and hatred, and it's all around us. Uh, The pandemic. Uh, Certainly the pandemic gave us opportunities for neighborly love, for solidarity, but the pandemic also brought about division within us. Do you wear masks or no masks? Do you stay home? Do you go out? Do you listen to the authorities, or do you go your own way? These are divisive questions. The way you answer these questions puts you into different camps. The news, social media, the internet, uh, it's filled with comment sections and commentators, opinions, vitriol. I mean, these places are are veritable beehives, uh, angry swarming with opinions and and frustration toward other people. And then this past week, we saw racial unrest. We saw divisions and frustration and and dissatisfaction with the status quo. And that spilled out into cities and streets and neighborhoods. We've seen protesters and demonstrators and then counter-protesters and counter-demonstrators, and they're clashing in division. Everywhere we look, we see disharmony, division, 
contempt. Except for one place. Except for one place. The Trinity. You see, in the Trinity, we see harmony. We see union. We see togetherness. In the Trinity, we see love overflowing and spilling over in abundance. We look at the world around us and we see contempt and division. We look at the Trinity, we see exactly the opposite. Uh, Now we hear about the Trinity in God's Word. Uh, God has revealed Himself to us through His Word. And we don't get very far into Scripture before we encounter the triune God. In fact, we hear about Him in the beginning. Uh, Genesis, we hear this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Now, just a little further in our reading from Genesis, we hear the triune God say this. He says, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. Uh, Notice the plural pronouns, let us make, in our image. Uh, This is an inter-Trinitarian conversation. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit conversing together, creating together, making mankind, you and me, humanity, and making human creatures to be image bearers of God, to have innate dignity and value and worth. Uh, We hear more about the triune God in the beginning, the Gospel of John. John chapter 1, we hear this, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him. So in the very beginning, the creation of the cosmos and all there within, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit together in harmony and unity creating. Now we go on in Scripture, we hear more about the triune God. In our reading from Acts, uh, we hear that Peter is uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and he uh, gives this, this sermon on Pentecost And this is what Peter says. He says, This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. So God raised Jesus from the dead. The Holy Spirit anointed and empowered Jesus. Jesus. And Jesus poured out his spirit upon his followers. Again, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we hear that they are united in work, united in ministry. They are together about the task of redemption, redeeming you and me and a lost, fallen, hurting creation. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit unified in mission to buy you back, to make all things new, to wipe away tears. And the church has a a practice. Uh, On the basis of Scripture, the church has a practice of confessing creeds about the Trinity. Uh, This is Trinity Sunday, and on Trinity Sunday, uh, historically, the church confesses the Athanasian Creed. Uh, After the sermon, Pastor Davis is going to have a video uh, unpacking some parts of the Athanasian Creed. Uh, But for 1,500 years, the church has confessed these words about the triune God. The church confesses, we worship one God in Trinity and the Trinity in unity, neither blending their persons nor dividing their essence. For the person of the Father is a distinct person, The person of the Son is another, and that of the Holy Spirit still another. 
but the divinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one. Their glory equal, their majesty co-eternal. Now in these words, in this creed, we are confessing two different things. We're confessing that there is diversity within the Trinity, and there's unity within the Trinity. Uh, in this creed, some of the, the, the parts of it talk about how the Father is not the Son, and the Son is not the Holy Spirit. They are different persons. They're distinct. They're unique. They are other from one another. But in this creed, we also say that they are not divided. They are not uh, disconnected and separate. It's not three gods, but one God. They are in harmony. They are together. They are one in essence, co-eternal, God. So in this creed, in Scripture, we can confess there's diversity in unity and unity in diversity, and that is the triune God. So we look at this world, and what do we see? Division, contempt, separation. We look at the Trinity, we see the exact opposite thing. Togetherness, harmony, unity, oneness. And friends, this world desperately needs that. This world needs to see harmony. This world needs to see unity. This world needs to see beauty and love. Uh, in other words, you could say this world needs to see God. This world is in desperate need of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Triune God. And as followers of Jesus, uh, as people who have our eyes set on Jesus, we are called to be imitators of Christ. We are empowered to be image bearers of God. That's who we were made to be. We were made in the image of God. And in Christ Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we're a new creation. We are restored in our capacity to bear the image of God. So God's Word talks about it as if when the world sees us as the people of Jesus, that the world should be able to see Jesus looking at us and seeing God because we are imitators and image bearers of God. Now certainly we do this imperfectly. We do this in small ways, but in important ways. And so we can look to see how God is at work reconciling this world through us. We can look and see how God is, is revealed in our actions as his people. We can do this in a number of different ways. Uh, first of all, we are children of the Father. We are children of the Father. So that means that at, at our deepest core, our deepest identity, it's not Democrat or Republican, our deepest identity is not mask wearer or not mask wearer. It's not black, brown, white, or any other shade of skin color. Our deepest identity, who we are, children of the Father. Children of the Father. We are God's creation with innate dignity and value and worth. That's who we are. Now, certainly we are sinners, but we are beloved sinners. We are beloved children of God. And when we relate to other people on the basis of the Father, that has reconciling power. So rather than relating to people based on political standing, a skin color, ethnicity, or, or social standing, we relate to people as children of the Father. We all have that in common. And we are reconciled by the Son. Reconciled by the Son. That, that, that story about Paco drives at the point of, of reconciliation, how this is our deep longing and need. We want this. We need this. Not just as individuals, but as a church, as communities, as a nation, as a world. And God has made that possible in Jesus. This is what Scripture says. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... The new creation has come. The old has gone. The new 
is here. God has made reconciliation possible in Jesus. God has made forgiveness possible in Jesus. Through the cross, through the empty tomb, God has reconciled us to himself, and he's made it possible for us to forgive, to reconcile, to live in harmony and peace like the Trinity. And then finally, we are the Holy Spirit's arms. We are the Holy Spirit's arms. Scripture says the Spirit dwells in you. That means that your arms are the Holy Spirit's arms. Your mouth is the Holy Spirit's mouth. Your eyes, your ears, all your members, they are vessels for the Holy Spirit. Use them well. Use them to edify and build up others. Speak love. Speak forgiveness. Speak the good news of the gospel. That also means speaking up for other people, for vulnerable neighbors. That includes the unborn. That includes neighbors who've been oppressed or rejected or excluded. That includes speaking up for our refugee, our newcomer friends among us. We are a new creation in Christ. We are the Holy Spirit's arms. As we look at the world, we see division brokenness, hurting. We look to the Trinity, we see something totally different. We see what the world needs now. Harmony and beauty, togetherness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can reflect that. If we don't do it well, we do it in small ways, but we do it in significant ways because God is at work in it. This is most certainly true. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Well, as I mentioned in the sermon, uh, this is Trinity Sunday, and on Trinity Sunday, the church historically confesses the Athanasian Creed. And today what we're going to do is uh, Pastor Davis is going to uh, lead us through a, a brief reflection uh, on the Athanasian Creed in this video. Good morning, St. Luke family. Happy Trinity Sunday. Hey, Here's my favorite part. Thus there is one father, not three fathers, a one son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another. None is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and a unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Of course, that's a snippet from the Athanasian Creed. It's the custom of the church to confess that creed on Trinity Sunday. It's one of the three creeds of the church, the apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian that we Christians have been using through the ages to proclaim our faith in the one true God. Uh, this creed is notable for a number of reasons. Uh, the first is it has the most extensive conversation about the identity of the Trinity in the three ecumenical creeds, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but not three gods, one God. It also has a great conversation or description about the two natures of Jesus, that he's truly God and truly man. It also gives good detail about the atonement, that we are Saved, We are made right with God because of the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Our sins have been taken away. Our shame is covered up. Uh, our powerlessness is overcome by the great power and the glory of God. It also identifies or speaks about the identification of Christians uh, as those who do good works. We're identified by such good works. Uh, we're not saved by them. What a wonderful description this is of the Christian faith. It's called the Catholic faith, which doesn't mean the Roman Catholic faith. It means this is the universal faith. This is the faith by which we are to be saved. Like it says in Acts chapter 4, uh, salvation is found in no one else, for there's no other name given among men by which we are to be saved. Now, frankly speaking, 
the Athanasian Creed is probably better to be studied than recited. And so even though we aren't reciting the Creed today, I want to encourage you to spend some time this Trinity Sunday studying it. I think you can find a copy of it online very easily, and I'd have you spend some time today studying what this says and how this confesses the biblical teaching of the triune God, the biblical teaching of the two natures of Jesus and the work that he has done and the identification of God's people as those who follow in the footsteps of Jesus. What a great encouragement that is to study and to spend some time today uh, thinking about the Athanasian Creed. And you can email all your questions to Pastor Davis as well. <laughs> uh, we continue now with our announcements. Uh, we continue to have our communion services available this coming week. Uh, that'll be on Thursday uh, at the Meridian Campus Outdoor Worship Center. We have opportunities then at 5 and 7, as well as Saturday at Christ Campus and Meridian Campus, both of those 9.30, June 13th. Uh, also, we have a prayer walk coming up. That is on June 14th, and that's at noon. Uh, Pastor Davis often says that uh, the church moves forward on its knees in prayer. Uh, and as we thought about in the sermon, this is a time of, of division and disharmony in, in our world. And, and we need desperately to be about the, the task and the work of prayer, a unique thing that the church does. So I encourage you, uh, be looking for more information. Uh, set aside some time that day and that time, uh, but we're going to give you some information on, on how to do a prayer walk and different ways you can pray for uh, the unrest, uh, the need for reconciliation, the need for healing in our world. Uh, we are also moving into our second phase of reopening uh, which praise God for that and the opportunity we have to move into this second phase. So a couple updates on that. Uh, Monday, June 15th, uh, we'll be reopening our offices and also allowing groups of less than 10 uh, to meet in the church again. Uh, and then also June 21st, uh, that's a Sunday, uh, we'll be again beginning our in-person worship. We'll continue to have live stream available for you. Uh, but starting June 21st, we'll be uh, entering into a, a new phase where we'll be back together with in-person worship. Uh, again, be looking for information on that, uh, times and so forth, as we get closer. Uh, we do have an Assembly of Voters meeting that will be coming up. That is on June 29th at 7 p.m. on Monday. Uh, be sure to keep that in front of you and uh, look for information on that as we get closer. Uh, VBS this year, it's going to be a little different as many things are lately, uh, but VBS, the dates for that, July 12th through 17th, uh, it's going to be kind of a hybrid. Uh, it's going to be some take-home resources that, that you can take certain things home with you uh, to do VBS that way, but also we'll be making some uh, resources and videos available online as well. Uh, so be looking for that, but be sure to keep your mind uh, uh, on VBS. It will be happening, just a little different from usual. And then lastly, uh, we have uh, many different ways that you can uh, share your tithe and offerings. Uh, they can be mailed into the Meridian Campus, uh, also given online through uh, Excel in Giving, which is found on our website, and there's also information there about how you can text to give. Uh, now, this time of year, uh, we often uh, spend some time celebrating our graduates and uh, what a great joy it is to celebrate with them, uh, as with other things. Graduation is a little different this year for many folks, but we do want to honor uh, high school and college graduates. Uh, we are the body of Christ, and uh, we celebrate with each and every member as they begin this new chapter of life. So here's our graduates for this year. Hi, my name is Anna Grounds. I'm graduating from Okemos High School and plan on attending Michigan State University in the fall. One of my favorite Bible verses is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Go green. My name is Jackie Riley. I'm graduating from Oklahoma's High School this year, and I'm attending Oakland University. I'm going to be playing on the women's soccer team there and majoring in secondary education. And one of my favorite Bible verses is from 1 Timothy 4, 12. It says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young 
but instead set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Hi, I'm Rachel Lee. I went to Okemos High School, and I'm going to MSU to study kinesiology. My favorite Bible verse is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. I'm Danny Reese. I will be graduating Grand Ledge High School. A favorite Bible verse of mine is 2 Corinthians 5, 7, which is we walk by faith, not by sight. And I will be attending Alma College this fall to study pre-sports pre medicine and swim. Go Scots! Good morning, everyone. My name is Chiara Genovese, and I recently graduated from Wayne State University with my master's degree in library science. My goal is to become a community outreach librarian in a public library with a specialization in event programming. I'd like to take this time to thank you all for your prayers as I have been on the prayer list for a while due to a tough illness. Once I'm healed up, I'm excited to begin again with a new library job and a new chance to participate in St. Luke's activities. I would also like to share one of my favorite Bible verses with you all. It is from Numbers 23, 19. God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? I hope these words speak to you as it does to me. Have a great rest of your day. Hi, my name is Celia Wachowitz and I'm a graduate of Concordia University Ann Arbor class of 2020. I graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Family Life Education and I am now a rostered LCMS church worker who is hoping to be called as a director of Family Life Ministry. A verse that is really important to me is Psalm 73, 26, which says, My heart and my flesh may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So there's many of our graduates. I'm sure there may be some others in the congregation and connected to St. Luke that are graduating as well. And congrats to all of you, and we'll lift up a word of prayer for you. Let's pray. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for these graduates and all the graduates uh, in our congregation and in our community. And Lord, we ask that you would go with them, that you'd provide them great protection, great wisdom, and that you would be present in this new phase, in this new chapter of life. We pray this all in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Our service continues as we prepare for prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you this morning that you fed your children with the spiritual food of your word and your spirit. Thank you for the message that touches our hearts for the unity of the Holy Father and Son and the spirit which reflects in our life and situation. Let this message stay in our heart so that we may walk with you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, giver of all things, with gladness we give thanks for all your goodness we bless you for the love which has created and which sustained us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, through whom you have made known your will and grace. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and good people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that our Lord has done for us, and enable us to show our thankfulness by lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, save and defend your whole church, purchased 
with the precious blood of Christ. Give it pastors and ministers filled with your spirit and strengthen it through the word and the holy sacraments. Make it perfect in love and in all good works and establish it in the faith delivered to the saints. Sanctify and unite your people in all the world that one holy church may bear witness to you, the creator and redeemer of all. Lord, in your mercy. Give your wisdom and heavenly grace to all pastors and to those who hold office in your church, that by their faithful service, faith may abound in your kingdom, increase. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, Holy Trinity, preserve our nation in justice and honor that we may lead a peaceful life of integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land. We pray to our President of the United States. We pray for our governors and all those who make, administer, and judge our laws and help them to serve these people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Trinity, take from us all hatred and prejudice. Give us the spirit of love and dispose our days in your peace. Prosper the labors of those who take counsel for the nations of the world that mutual understanding and common endeavor may be increased among all people. Lord, in your mercy. Father, sanctify our homes with your presence and joy. Keep our children in the covenant of their baptism and enable their parents to fear them and rear them in a life of faith and devotion. By the spirit of affection and service, unite the members of all families that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we thank you for the lives of our friends and their activities. Especially today, we thank you for those who are celebrating their anniversaries their birth anniversaries, marriage anniversaries, graduation anniversaries, be with them. Thank you that you are walking with them and blessing them. And we ask you to continually bless them so that they may stand and endure in serving you and enhancing the kingdom that they are involved in. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Comfort with the grace of your Holy Spirit all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and mourning and to all grand measure of your love taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth, who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Father, all these things and whatever else you see that we need, grant us. Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God and forever. 
And now let us join what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.